Hi, how's everybody doing today? I'm your host, Rich from Rich TV Live, and I'm here with the CEO of MPXI, MPX International, Scott Boys. How are you doing today, Scott? Great, Rich. Thanks for having me. Pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you for joining us. Very excited to learn more about MPXI directly from the CEO. And why don't we get started and you can tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with MPX International Corp. I've been involved with the cannabis sector since about 2014, one of the early guys. We actually started out with MPX Corporation, um, which was U.S.-based. Yeah, yes, it was U.S.-based. Uh, we raised about $120 million, primarily in Europe, in 2018 and early 2019. Um, we bought assets in Arizona, Nevada, Massachusetts, Maryland, uh, just we're just on the edge of a license in New Jersey, moving into California. Um, and a couple of couple offers came along and we ended up selling off our US assets for 835 million, made a lot of money for our shareholders in two years. Wow. Um, what was left was a Canadian operation and we had been looking at expanding international. So we kept the name, changed it to MPX International and we spent the last two years aggregating assets internationally. We see the U.S. market as being growing, of course, but fractured the way the, way the U.S. laws are set up. Canada, of course, is oversupplied, although we do participate in the Canadian market. But we see the real future being in Europe and Southeast Asia and other parts of the globe. The cannabis industry is going to be a global industry in five years. Absolutely. We were an early mover in the U.S. We were one of the first listed on the CSC. We made our shareholders a lot of money. Now the idea is to take that internationally and, and replicate the whole process. I love it. I think that's a great strategy. And congratulations to all the shareholders that did well in the first round. Can you tell us what the main goals are for 2021 to help generate revenues for MPX International Corp? And do you have any revenue projections for 2021 and 2022? Well, we're not. I'm not going to give out guidance. Um, COVID has slowed us down a little bit. We spent the last year. I mean, we were in kind of a unique position because in in 2019, after we sold off the MPX US business, we started building assets internationally. So we've we've started to build out a lab in Switzerland to process CBD. We uh, expand started to expand our some unique expansions of our business in Canada. We started to build out a grow in South Africa, and we started to build out a EU GMP lab in Malta. Wow. And COVID, of course, hit. The capital markets dried up a little bit. And so we've spent the last year moving those projects forward. And now they're all sitting there ready to, to burst out. The lab in Malta is virtually finished. The lab in Switzerland is finally finished and producing CBD distillate. Um, our operations in Canada are now up and running and cash flow positive. Um, we're, we've built out a half hectare greenhouse that's about three quarters full in South Africa. Um, and so we we've, we've spent the year building out those assets. And now we're ready to jump into uh, revenue producing in, in virtually all of those operations over the next the 12 months. That's fantastic. So our timing is perfect for our community. Now, MPX International Corp, wholly owned subsidiary, recently announced it's pleased to enter into an agreement between Canveta Inc., a license holder under the Cannabis Act in Canada, and the Green Organic Dutchman Holdings Limited. Can you break this down to our viewers and what this means for the company? Okay, so one of the one of the, the operations we have in Canada is called the Micro Medical Cannabis Learning Network. Some of your investors probably know that um, first responders, fire, theft, auto, military vets, in Canada have their medical cannabis covered by government insurance program. And actually a lot of corporations now, their, their employee insurance programs are starting to cover medical cannabis. So we see the medical side growing. The Medical Cannabis Learning Network is a platform where uh, patients can go online, learn about cannabis. There's all kinds of videos and talks. They can actually go online and consult with a nurse practitioner, talk about their particular ailments and conditions, get recommend, recommendations for, for cannabis, the type of cannabis, the variety, the delivery methodology, and then actually get a prescription written for them. And then online, there's also a sales portal where they can go and buy, buy various products, various cannabis medicines. 
uh, with different cannabinoid contents to different delivery methods. So our goal is to make that platform available to other other suppliers. Canvita is our uh, our licensee. We have our own products, but we want the variety of products made available to the patients so that they can get buy from other suppliers. So, for instance, Health Canada or um, uh, Health. So, for instance, um, Shoppers Drug Mart is on the portal. Um, we just added T Guide, the Green Organic Dutchman, and there's other uh, licensed producers that'll be coming onto the portal over the next little while. It also the back. It's also the backdrop for Mira CBD, which is a, is another client on there. Our Spartan Group, which deals with the military, uh, is on there, uh, and it's it's a very active active and growing source of revenue. And we take commissions on the sales, even from other suppliers. So, I really believe in education of new sectors. So, educating people about cannabis, I think, is a great idea. And it's a it new educates people, sector. educates doctors, and as I said, it's a it's an education portal. It's a um, an interview portal where you can actually get a cannabis a medical cannabis permit, and it's a, a point of sale portal as well. And it's all it's all together, and it's and operating it's very efficiently. I think that's great. I think that's a great uh, model that you guys have in place and there's a huge need for it. Can you give us a rundown of the team at MPX International Corp and what each member brings to the company? Fortunately, a lot of the team that is still with the company was the team that, that built the U.S. operation um, and took and made our shareholders money on that side. So, uh, for instance, Jeremy Budd is our general counsel and secretary. He's a securities lawyer. Um, he's been with me since the start. Uh, our controller has been with us since the start in 2016. Um, Jeremy Bloomer, we just added recently as our new CFO. He's been in the industry for several years, so very versed in it. Um, Nick Varone is our VP of Extraction. He just finished our lab in Switzerland and is working on a couple other projects. He's actually based in Rhode Island, so we travel him around the world. Um, our VP of uh, Cultivation as Emmer Chimia, Emmer Chimia. he's um, uh, has a PhD in plant biology and has been involved in the cannabis sector for eight to 10 years. In fact, he used to work for one of the suppliers we're currently dealing with on the MCL head. So it's a very strong team. We've got strong management people in all our locations in Switzerland, in Malta, particularly in Malta, we have two QPs. In Europe, you have to be EU GMP officer certified. And there's only 13 of them in all of Malta and two of them work for us. So wow. it's, yeah. Can you- Very strong team and, it's, and a very strong board, international board. Very good. Can you tell us what sets MPX International Corp apart from its competitors in the cannabis space? Well, one thing we didn't build a big infrastructure in Canada. So <laughs> we don't have millions of square feet of grow. We, we spend a lot of, we actually sell to, to most of the provinces now, but we were, we become a broker of flour and products. We buy them from others and, and then resell them through the, through the OCS and through EGLC and so forth. Um, but I think our biggest focus is the fact that we're focused on the international market. And we're, we're young, we're small, we're quick, we can move quickly. Um, we see opportunities. We have a strong investor back, backing. We've had a group of investors that have been with me since 2015 that Keep, uh, keep supporting us. Um, it's it's the international market that we see our futures in. It's we've stayed out of the U.S. until federal it gets federally legal and we don't have all those complications. Uh, and our focus really is on Europe and Southeast Asia. Here at Rich TV Live, we've got investors in over 100 countries worldwide, and we love tight float stocks, mm -hmm. companies that are responsible with their share structure. Can you break down your share structure and how much is held by insiders? Uh, we've got about 143 million shares outstanding. Um, less than 10% is held by insiders. We do have some big outside investors. Um, as I said, investors that have been with us uh, all along the trail since 2015, 2016. Most of them are European based. But we do have a very broad minority shareholder base. When, MP when the MPX bioceutical transaction happened, all the shareholders, and we had about 30,000 shareholders at that time, got a small piece of MPXI. And it, we don't trade a lot, so my guess is a lot of them are holding them for future value. And uh, they're going to get rewarded. We love learning about growing 
companies. Can you break down, and I know you don't have to talk about it, but if you can, it'd be great, the company's balance sheet and maybe how much cash you guys have on hand and how much debt so we have a better idea of the company balance sheet? We have $7.5 million in debt, convertible debt, um, that we've actually added recently. As I said before, when we when the COVID hit in 2000 or early 2019, we had several projects in development. So we didn't want to go to the capital markets to raise a lot of money. Our share price, like everybody else, has dropped down um, and be overly dilutive. So we have raised small tranches as required to, to keep the projects moving forward. Uh, we cut back on a lot of expenses. Um, so we're sitting with a few million in the bank and we will continue to raise small tranches of money as we need to, to move our projects forward. But at the same time, most of them are ready to come on stream. So we expect to be cash flow positive during, during the calendar 2020 oh, that's in cool. all our locations. Wow. Okay. Well, that's very positive. If there was one thing that you would want shareholders to know about MPX International Corp today, what would it be? Uh, just watch us. We're ready to launch in all our, uh, in all our jurisdictions. We're participating in some of the fastest growing markets in the world outside the United States. Um, we think we've got a pretty solid footprint in all of them. Uh, we're in the CBD market in Europe. We'll be in the in the medical cannabis market in Europe through Malta. We're uh, growing low cost cultivation in South Africa to feed our Maltese lab. Uh, we stayed away from Latin America. We went to a place where they speak English, English code of law, and in the same time zone as our European sector. Um, and we're growing quickly in Canada. So yes, we are ready to launch. That is exciting. Scott, what is the significance in Thailand and Asia and the prospects for MPXI in those markets? Well, as you know, Rich, I'm sitting in Bangkok right now. Um, you don't fly 28 hours in the middle of a pandemic and go through 15 days quarantine unless you've got some pretty good prospects. Um, Absolutely. Thailand has kind of been the leader in Southeast Asia in terms of introduction of medical cannabis. The government is very supportive, uh, particularly the health minister here, Mr. Anutin, has been aggressively pushing to create a viable cannabis business in Thailand. They want to make Thailand the, the medical cannabis hub of Southeast Asia. And we've been working here for about a year now um, with federal authorities, with local investors uh, to create a project. I don't want to talk too much about it because it's not ready yet. We haven't announced it to the market um, and it may or may not happen, but the prospects are looking pretty good. And this is a huge market. Um, our Prohibition partners think this will be a $600 million market by 2024 wow. and that Southeast Asia will be an $8 billion market by 2024. And that oh. includes both medical cannabis and CBD, which is still rather relatively controlled in this area. So um, that's it's, it's a pretty exciting play, this, this particular part of the world. Oh. And there's not very many Western countries that are here. In fact, there are none that are here. Yeah, I was going to say that. I don't think I know of anyone that's in those markets. So hopefully that is going to be a home run for MPXI. And last question, what is the best way for shareholders to get in touch with the company? We're going to have some shareholders that are going to be interested in getting in contact with you, learning more before they invest, maybe potential other cannabis companies that are going to watch this video that might want to do a joint venture, an LOI, especially now that they hear that you're doing business in Asia. Uh, potentially going to do business in Asia. Potentially <laughs> going to do business in Asia and you're actually there. So yeah, don't get me in trouble with my securities lawyer. Yes, no, don't want to do that. What would what would you say is the best way for a shareholder to get in contact with you or the company? We have uh, on our website, we have info at mpxinternationalcorp.com. Uh, obviously, send us a message there. Um, my email is scott at mpxinternationalcorp.com. I get questions from investors all the time. Uh, happy to, to give them feedback. Uh, check our website. We have multiple websites, actually. Each one of our subsidiaries has a website. Uh, if you look at our last, at the end of every press release, all the multiple websites are listed. So we've got one, I think there's seven or eight websites that we operate that kind of break down the segments of our company and, and, and just tons of information on all of them. 
Well, thank you for joining us today, Scott Boys, the CEO of MPX International. Remember, everyone who's watching this video, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Please always do your due diligence, do your research, and consult a financial advisor before you invest in anything that we talk about here in Rich TV Live. If you like the video, please smash the like button, comment on the video, and subscribe. This is Rich from Rich TV Live with Scott Boys, the CEO of MPX International. Thank you for joining us today, Scott. Pleasure, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up all the great work. And thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, everybody.